Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a Malaysian comedy film called Beautiful World. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins in an elementary school where a doctor is weighing the students for an annual weight checkup. In the modern world, the beauty standard has changed and fat people are considered more beautiful and appealing than skinny ones. The doctor praises a boy named Zhen Pang for weighing the most out of everyone. Zhen Pang also holds the record for being the fattest one in their class for the past five years. The nurses set him as an example and ask the others to eat with dedication and be as fat as him. After school, Zhen Pang's mother comes to pick him up. The parents of other kids compliment his mother for her and Zhen Pang's outstanding weight. One of the mothers is worried for her daughter, Tian Tian, because she is too thin. It turns out that no one wants to marry thin people in this world. However, Zhen Peng compliments Tian Tian, claiming that she is thin and pretty. He is unlike everyone else as he doesn't see fat people as beautiful. While returning home, Zhen Peng says that he wants to lose weight because he cannot even see his toes while standing up. He thinks that being fat is ugly and dumb. The kid insists that he would rather fly like a bird than waddle around like a pig. This makes his mother angry, who scolds him for being unlike everyone else in the world. One day, at school, Zhen Pang sees some kids bullying Tian Tian for being skinny and ugly. He chases them away, but Tian Tian doesn't appreciate his kindness. She believes that he is being sarcastic by calling her pretty. When Zhen Pang insists that she is beautiful, Tian Tian hits him and walks away. Several years have passed since the incident. The world hasn't changed a bit, as being fat is still the beauty standard. All the models on magazine covers, famous actors, and singers are fat. But Zhen Peng has grown up into a skinny adult who owns a donut shop. He is low on customers because his donuts are not classified according to their calories and are made of healthy fruits. His mother is always worried about him and the shop because Zhen Peng goes against societal norms and doesn't care if people think he is thin. She urges him to use more sugar in his donuts, but Zhen Peng is persistent about wanting to make his products healthy. Zhen Peng's girlfriend, Manko, is also thin and believes she is ugly. She goes to fattening classes where a lady teaches them to eat as unhealthily as possible. They are told that the heavier a woman is, the more space she can take in a man's heart. Manko is distressed because she has only gained 0.5 kilograms in three months, unlike her classmates who gained 30 kilograms. Don't worry about your competition, Manko. At this rate, they'll all be dead soon. To motivate her, the teacher reminds her of the discrimination against thin people in society. She even gives a heartfelt speech on how she wanted to harm herself because she was too skinny. After the class, Manko and her skinny friend go to a restaurant and try to eat as much as they can. But halfway through the meal, Manko gets sick and has to be taken to the hospital. Zhen Pang comes to see her and assures her she is pretty even though she is thin. Manko's day gets worse when the doctor advises her to eat light foods for the next week. After returning home, she complains about not being able to gain weight. Zhen Pang asks her to quit the fattening program because it is making her sick, but Manko flat out refuses. In their next fattening class, Manko and her friend are kicked out of the program because they give it a bad reputation. The organizers do not want skinny girls to represent them. This is a bad idea. What if Subway turned away Jerry? The girls retaliate, but the teacher claims there is no hope for them to gain weight and become beautiful. Manko and her friend walk outside the facility in disappointment. Her friend's boyfriend has refused to marry her unless she gains weight. She jumps in front of a running car to commit suicide when suddenly a handsome fat man stops the car with his bare hands and saves her. The man turns out to be the creator of the fattening program, Simon. He sends Manko's friend home safely and even asks the lady who just kicked them out to enroll them back in the program. According to him, the institution is made for skinny women who want to feel beautiful. Manko is visibly impressed by the boss's kindness. When the two are alone, he apologizes to her for the employee's behavior. Before leaving, he hands her his business card, asking her to call him anytime. Following that, Manko meets Zhen Pang, but ignores him completely and is too focused on her phone. Zhen Pang feels like her girlfriend will leave him after gaining weight, but Manko dismisses the conversation. The next day is a launch party of the fattening program's next products. Manko's classmates who have enrolled in the program alongside her are on the stage showing their progress, while Manko and her friend are serving drinks to the guests. 
Everyone is waiting for a superstar model, Debbie, who is the honorary guest of the launch. Manko approaches Simon and his friends and hands him a special drink. Simon introduces her to his friends as a new talent who will surely gain weight in the next three months. But as soon as she leaves, we find out that it was his idea to kick them out of the program. When he realized the girls resorted to suicide, he pretended to be on their side to avoid a potential lawsuit. The table makes fun of Manko's weight, calling her a bamboo stick. In the following scene, we are introduced to superstar Debbie, who turns out to be Zhen Pang's former classmate, Tian Tian. Because of her bullies, she made it her mission to gain weight and be the prettiest version of herself. She is now a top Chinese model and hates Zhen Pang for sarcastically calling her beautiful when she was young. She makes a grand entrance into the venue, leaving everyone in awe. Zhen Pang, on the other hand, is backstage delivering donuts for the party. He decides to wait for Manko until the event ends. Inside, Debbie gives a heartfelt speech on how she was bullied while in school. After the event, Debbie leaves after telling Simon that the donuts were awful. Manko and her friend say goodbye to Simon and the others, but the group insists they stay for a drink. Manko agrees, not knowing that her boyfriend is waiting for her outside. As the conversation continues, it is evident that Manko is jealous of the other fat girl getting closer to Simon. They place a bet on who can drink more alcohol. Driven by jealousy, Manko drinks several glasses. The men enjoy the competition and ask them to eat the donuts as well. When Manko starts getting nauseous, one of Simon's friends shoves a donut into her throat. Zhen Pang, who has just entered the venue, sees this and pushes the man away from his girlfriend. No one makes my girlfriend eat my shitty donuts but me, says Zhen Pang. He gets into a fight with them and calls their fattening program a scam. Things get heated when he pushes Simon for joking about the situation. An angered Simon kicks both of them out of the venue. As they leave, the group makes fun of the couple, saying that they look like a pair of chopsticks. That was actually a pretty good burn. Zhen Pang takes Manko to a restaurant to calm her down. She is furious at him for ruining the only good thing that was going on in her life. She says that she has never found him attractive and was in a relationship with him only because he was skinny like her. Before leaving, Manko declares that they have broken up. A sad Zhen Pang sluggishly makes his way outside, but a metal billboard advertising the fattening program falls on him, knocking him out. The impact causes Zhen Pang to go into a coma. His mother, furious at everyone who led her son to the hospital bed, decides to sue the fattening company. Soon, Simon and his employees get a letter from her lawyer. The media finds out about the news and criticizes the company for making faulty billboards that put common people's lives in danger. Since the billboard had Debbie's picture on it, she too gets backlash from the media for supporting such brands. She and her assistant look for a way to turn the hate she is getting on social media and find out the victim is her elementary school bully, Zhen Pang. The very next day, Debbie brings a bouquet of flowers to the hospital. She meets Zhen Pang's mother and introduces herself as Tian Tian. The woman is surprised to see the skinny little girl from elementary school who has changed into a beautiful fat woman. Debbie compliments her figure and wins Zhen Pang's mother with her kindness. She even transfers Zhen Pang to the VIP room as an apology for endorsing the fattening program. But when she is alone with her assistant, she reveals that she helped them only because she wanted the media to portray her as a kind-hearted celebrity. Moreover, she wants Zhen Pang to gain consciousness so she could take revenge for how he treated her in school. The next day, Debbie visits Zhen Pang early in the morning. She hits him in the face and jumps on top of him to take her revenge. But her plan fails when the impact brings him back to consciousness. Zhen Pang is shocked to see her but doesn't voice his surprise. After he is discharged from the hospital, Debbie starts visiting their donut shop every day to meet his mother. She also agrees to taste test the donuts until they live up to her standard and offers to be their brand ambassador. Zhen Pang brings her to a private area and asks her why she is being too nice to his family when it is clear that she has always hated him. Debbie gets emotional and tells him how much he affected her childhood. As she yells at him to apologize, she falls unconscious on the ground. The doctor tells Zhen Pang that Debbie has several health issues because of her size, but she refuses to lose weight. If she continues to overeat, she will most likely get heart disease and die at an early age. Zhen Pang feels bad for Debbie and wants to help her, but he doesn't know how. Debbie is bothered by her losing 5 kilograms in a week. She wants to get back to being 90 kilograms before the shooting of her debut film starts. For that, she brings out an illegal weight-increasing medicine that the doctor had asked her to stay away from. 
Her assistant tries to warn her against it, but Debbie takes the medicine anyway. As a side effect, she gets severe rashes on her back. The next day, she goes to a radio show to talk to fans and motivate them to eat more. Zhen Peng listens to the program and calls in under the name Donut. That'll fool him, Zhen Peng. He expresses his view on the trend and claims that the size of your body should not determine your worth in society. He also shares that he used to be a fat kid but now is skinny. Knowing that it is him on the phone, Debbie visits his shop later. They get into a heated argument, but Debbie feels dizzy in the middle. Zhen Peng brings her in and offers her a cup of tea. He calmly explains to her that her health is more important than any kind of beauty contest. Before leaving, Debbie asks him if she can really ignore people's words and live life how she wants to. Zhen Peng says that he has been doing the same his whole life. Starting the next day, he meets her every day and helps her eat less by eating all of her food himself. After the meal, the two talk about their love lives. Debbie understands Zhen Peng for the first time and starts to like him. One day, Zhen Peng's mother informs him that Debbie had to be rushed to the hospital after she overdosed on fattening drugs. Zhen Peng quickly rushes to her house and finds out from her assistant that the news was fake, but it has affected Debbie's reputation harshly. Later, he finds her crying alone and talks to her. Debbie expresses her feelings to him and feels a lot lighter after talking. At last, Zhen Peng carries her home on his back. A year passes after the incident. Debbie took a break from modeling and worked on improving her health. She has turned skinny and way healthier than she was a year ago. Her assistant wants her to visit Zhen Peng because it is evident that she misses him. Debbie agrees and gets out of her apartment for the first time in a year. She goes to the park bench and sits alone. To her surprise, Zhen Peng appears out of nowhere and sits beside her. He doesn't seem to recognize her at first but then hands her a donut and calls her Tian Tian. Zhen Peng has been staking out this park for an entire year. Debbie is delighted that he recognized her after all this time. The movie ends as they playfully fight by the lake. The moral of the story is that even in a world where fat is beautiful, society will always pressure us to be skinny. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.